So it's finally happening. I'm walking the River Wandle down here in Carshalton. I'm going to do the shorter version of the River Wandle walk, the nine mile version, still recovering from my injury I incurred over on Harmonsworth Moor, what, six weeks ago or so now. Carshalton's really interesting. But today I have a special guest as well. I have not just any old friend coming along, but <laughs> Professor Kate Spencer. <laughs> Professor Kate Spencer, who you will have seen recently on Channel 4 News, talking about the terrible story. Actually, what were you talking about on Channel 4 News? Uh, old landfills eroding into the sea. Hopefully we're not going to see any of that today, but it means you might get a bit of proper knowledge on today's walk along the River Wanda. I'm so excited about this one, so excited. Look, Carshalton's fascinating, look at all this. So here we have Carshalton Ponds, one of the sources of the River Wanda. And it's a really beautiful scene here, isn't it? A really beautiful scene. There are a number of points of interest around Carshalton Ponds. So, so, Kate, you're saying that there's other sources of the of the wandle. Well, it's got lots and lots of sources where the chalk outcrops. This is like the furthest extent of the outcrop, um, and then when you hit into a different geology, that's where all the springs pop up. The um, one of the other sort of sources that people walk. You can do a longer version of the wander way, that, and it rises um, in um, Wadden Ponds near East Croydon. But you're saying, yeah, traditionally they did say the sources were on the downs. If you look on all the old maps, you can see like the, the geological maps, you can see the chalk downs and the edge of the chalk, and then you've got scattered. I mean, there's a lot of old, a lot of sources if you look on the old maps. So the Greyhound Inn over there is a very old coaching inn. I think it was uh, improved and built upon in the 18th century. But I think some of it goes back to at least the 1600s, which is amazing. Carl Shorten is really beautiful i don't know what i was expecting but it's taken us a little bit by surprise it's really delightful down here some fascinating archaeology here in carl shorten they found a, a rhinoceros skull here in carl shorten ponds there's a number of mesolithic implements that are found all around the headwaters of the wandle including here at carl shorten there's also bronze age implements that were found here and there was an iron age enclosure not far away so there's been human interaction with this site going back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. You can see where there's a little channel here that goes beneath this cottage and then it flows out into Carl Shorten Ponds here and there was a, an, a, a canal that was either never built or abandoned in the 1700s that runs into Carl Shorten Ponds and apparently there was a grotto as well near this point somewhere. There's also a holy well in Carl Shorten that would be good to find over there near the church. Is I think, um, I think like if you look at the history of the river, um, in the early 1800s they opened up all these ponds, probably put sort of dams in and opened the ponds up, and it was quite a, a kind of a nice place to come and visit. I think if you were sort of like affluent Victorian, and the the, the Wandle Park, which is on the car, the um, not the Carl Shorten branch, but the the Beddington Park branch. That I think is one of the first big public spaces um, and was a really beautiful Victorian park. But then of course it went through a real history of being polluted and lots and lots of industry and, uh, and by the sort of end of the 1800s it was pretty dirty polluted industrial river. Okay, you were saying there were trout, trout fisheries? Yeah, so the river went through like a real history in terms of pollution and water quality. So it's a chalk stream, which is a really unusual habitat, and chalk streams are really great for trout. So another reason why the Victorians would have come here, you know, um, had a really famous trout fishery. And I think, and I think I read that the Carshalton method was a particular way of catching trout. Interesting that there was an article in The Guardian today about the efforts to save England's chalk streams because yes. apparently under threat. There were two particular chalk streams where I grew up in the Chilterns, the Chess that I walked a couple of years ago and then also the, the Y that runs from High Wycombe down to the Thames is another chalk stream, really beautiful little yeah, little river. Yeah. Actually a lot of the work done on the Chess is one of my colleagues, Ah, fantastic. kind of the restoring the, ch restoring the Chess. But yeah, chalk streams, they're really val valuable, really rare habitats in the UK. Uh, and because, 
they should naturally have like low amounts of silt in them so they should look you know like that typical kind of clear kind of clear stream um, and one of the big problems with the the, the Kosh Alton branch of the of the Wandle was that urban runoff was bringing lots of silt into the river and, uh, and they describe it as being black and dirty. I'm unsure whether this is actually the, 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 the Wandel or whether this is the remnants of the canal. But either way, I think we're going to go this way to Wilderness Island. So the church back there at the ponds, that dates to at least the 1200s, although it is mentioned in uh, the Doomsday Book. And actually just here in the park, it's called the Grove, and I'm not sure if it has anything to do with um, Carl Shorten House, which is said to be the finest building in Carl Shorten, and became, uh, became a girls' school. I don't know if we're going to actually see Carl Shorten House. This is the thing with river walking. You often you stick doggedly to the river, and you, <laughs> you miss a lot of the other features. Right now, we've got slightly confused between the two branches of the Wandle, so what I took for maybe the remains of the canal is one branch and then on the other side of the park where we were heading for a, a little time is the other branch which comes down from Croydon. So down here on Wilderness Island is the continuation of the Wandle. So here just the other side of the park we have the official start of the Wandle Trail and look down there there's the Wandle beneath this bridge. About the, about the weirs. Well, I think a lot of the restoration that took place was to try and restore the trout fisheries because these chalk streams were really valuable. Trout fisheries had really lovely clean water. And you can see just down there, there's a, a weir and weirs would have stopped the movement of the fish. And it's kind of one of the, so you've got the pollution, but then also you've got the engineering of the river that would have, um, uh, that would have stopped the fish moving up and down. And I've never seen one, but I'm guessing that the, the weirs all had fish passages put in them. And you can just see that weir there has got a little divert around the, around the edge. And I wonder if that's for the fish. Yeah, it's interesting Like for me here, this really looks like the little river that ran through my village, the River Wye. And it also reminds me of the, the parts of the chest that I saw last year beginning of last year, very clear. You've got watercress beds down there. You can see the pebbles and the gravels at the bottom of the, the little stream. It's got a distinctive character to them, haven't they? It's the pebbles and those gravels that the trout like, the kind of clean flowing water and all the little crevices between the, 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 the gravels. That's where the trout uh, spawn and lay their eggs. So they need this kind of habitat. You've also got like a, a nice mix of environment so you've got little deep pools over there and you've got kind of shallow gravelly areas you've got the the vegetation in the middle and it's that variety of habitats and that variety of flow so some fast flowing some low flowing that's what's restored the the, the biodiversity and the habitat to the rivers this is uh this is our first sort of site of the old industrial wandle this was undoubtedly some sort of it wasn't a mill, it was a factory that used the water. And as we'll talk about later, the Wanda was a heavily industrialised river. At one point it was called the hardest working river of its size anywhere in the world. There were so many mills along it. I think we have a stink pipe here, which is associated with uh, sewage mains to release the gases. I mean, unless it isn't, unless it's a gas lamp, but it's a bit big for a gas lamp. Look at the top there. This is the, uh, the Wandle, at one end of Wilderness Island, which rises up here. And it's a beautiful nature reserve that was once quite industrial. It was the terminus of the uh, Surrey Iron Railway. A number of mills and stuff here. A little bit of a diversion for us at the start of our walk, so we're going to carry on along the Wandle Trail, which runs along the side of Wilderness Island. You can 
really see the difference of the, the site further up there where they did a lot of work to stop urban runoff. So when it rains, all the silt being washed off the street and into the river. And I think all of those schemes are further upstream. But you can see here, instead of that lovely, clean, fast flowing, gravelly water, you've got quite a lot of sort of silt and, and, and black, you know, kind of black sludge. I mean, it looks really different from what we've only walked 100 metres. We've got a kind of art fair here. lovely to be out with people and chatting but, um, we've passed through Hackbridge without really noticing it I think that's where that lovely little community art fair was Hackbridge and now look the Wandle Trail carries on here the uh, almost inevitable detour through the houses to loop back round to the Wandle Trail so in this estate here, we have a, a millstone just in the grass verge, which must have come from one of the many mills that lined the Wandle. At one point, there were 90 mills along the Wandle, 90 of them. I wonder if all this new housing um, was built on what was industrial land? I think you're right. Because that was mill estate, was it? Yeah, and I think that millstone was was mill side, and then back there, that looks like a mill race yeah. where it's been passed to power a mill, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely smell of the wildflowers here, down here. So the the Wandle was notable for its mills. Initially, the mills were uh, they were used for grinding corn. They were corn mills, and then I think around the 1600s they started to use them increasingly in the cloth making industry. I think there were dyeing mills along the Wandle, and I guess later on they must have been used in other industries as well. I don't know which ones necessarily. I mean, yeah. Even paper. Yeah. If you look at um, sort of issues about water quality, there were textile mills, lots of tanneries as well. Oh, uh, and they need the water, you know, the pa and paper mills as well, they need the water as part of the processing. But then, of course, all of those kind of industries, particularly in the kind of 1800s, would have all produced lots and lots of uh, toxic yeah. chemicals. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the major causes of water deterioration in the Wandle, because it was a really industrial river. I like you talked further back about uh, the smells of the wildflowers. The smells along this river must really have changed in the last kind of 150 years. You know, tanneries must have really stunk, um, and the sewage at some point would have made the water pretty stinky as well. And now we've got these lovely, you know, kind of uh, sort of you can see cow parsley, and and there's a really quite countryside feel here. I think this is a rare section where we're walking beside some warehouses here and we've lost the river on the other side but we'll reconnect with it very shortly there's some water through here but that is not the wandle and we've reconnected with the river here it's really quite wide here but you can see how shallow it is as well it's really delightful and all those new houses there probably built on former industrial land and we carry on down this industrial estate here. The Wandle, the name the Wandle is a little bit like the Ching, and a little bit like the Rom, where it's a back formation of Wandsworth. It's been known by other names in the past. It was known as the um, I think it was called the Hildeborna originally, which means either a slow stream or sloping stream. And apparently it's got a very steep drop down to the Thames. And then over the years, it was, I think it was known as the Leadborn. And the best name it went by was the Loveborn. Why did they, why did they stop calling it 
the love born. It's great. I think it was uh, William Camden, the historian and topographer, who in uh, 1586, I think it was, Latinized the name and call it the Vandalis, implying that at some point before then it started to become known as the Wandle. And in fact, actually, it was only it was only Camden who used that Latinized name of the Vandalis. I think a few other poets adopted it as well. And I believe that led some people to connect the Wandle with the Romans, but I don't know if there is a a particular link with the name Wandle with the Romans. There were Roman villas along various points of the Wandel, further along from where we are at the moment. But it's a, it's a river with a long history and, like a lot of them, many names. This is Porter Park. It's a really lovely stretch of the Wandle here beside this park. As I was saying, the little moorhen chicks, you can see how much they like the vegetation stands because it's the vegetation that's trapping all the food and all the organic matter and, uh, and that's why it's so much better to have this kind of environment than like the hard bottoms of the engineered river. This is the Watermeads Nature Reserve. It was given to the National Trust in 1913. Uh, by Octavia Hill, a social reformer and founding member of the National Trust. And it's a beautiful, look, beautiful pond here. So the, the Wando is actually on the other side of this nature reserve, but I think as we're walking on the Wando the whole way, I'm going to walk along this pond and then it picks up a, a paper mill cut. So it's part of the changing nature of the Wando. Soon, surely, to become urban and more industrial. I don't know, let's wait and see. So this is what this is a little um, this is a little cut of like a mill cut, and there it's joining the actual wandle just there. Over this little uh, bridge here, we had to stop in the uh, petrol station to get a Londis lunch, which we're going to try and find a place to eat it in the park up ahead. Kate, do you want to do you want to hear an interesting fact about the London Borough of Merton? Okay. So the the comedian Paul Merton isn't actually called Paul Merton. It's just that he grew up in the London Borough of Merton. So he took his name from, so he's almost like Paul of Merton rather than Paul Merton. <laughs> My international viewers at this point will be completely mystified. Paul Merton's a very popular stand-up comedian who has been on a long running TV show called Have I Got News For You for something like 30 something years. And he, he used to be one of my favorite stand-up comedians. I only say used to be, because I've not seen him do any stand-up for a long time, but I uh, kind of love Paul Merton. He's a real, film enthusiast as well and he's from this part of the world he's a great chap when I worked at the NFT he used to sometimes just come in to watch um, silent films and he would stand at the box office and chat because he had a lot of knowledge about silent about silent cinema he's a top guy Paul Merton and he's from here of course the other thing we got to look out for now Kate now that we're in Merton is a uh, site of Merton Abbey, which was a very, very influential uh, medieval abbey, Priory and Abbey, that obviously got dissolved in the dissolution of the monasteries. I, d I think there's just some foundations, but it was one of those places, a bit like Stratford Langthorne Abbey, uh -huh. that was a, and Bermondsey Abbey, was a real generator, cultural generator in the area, and political and economic generator in this area. So we're going around the edge of Ravensbury Park here. It's a really delightful stretch of the river and I feel like I've been saying that all the way along. The central uh, interpretation board tells us that Ravensbury Park was once part of Ravensbury Manor which dates back to medieval times. It talks about the way that this uh, land was last owned by the Bidder family and then uh, was purchased by the council of, councils of Mitcham, Merton and Morton for public use. A little bit more about the mills and the historic working river, calico, printing on cloth and gunpowder mills. 
there is an unavoidable odour in the air emanating from the river. Cape being an expert couldn't possibly say it smelled like sewage but I, I can make that ill-informed judgment because if it ain't sewage I don't know what that smell is. Certainly not a natural riverine odour I would say Kate. No I mean I can't I can't see where it's coming from but I know that um, misconnections are a, are a problem on the Wandle. So where people often inadvertently have maybe connected you know a downstairs toilet or a laundry. Uh, so this was the site of Ravensby Manor. This is the 1700 uh, Manor, not the medieval one. This is a really majestic, huge tree here. Anyone know what it is? So here's a bit of the old mill machinery here. You can hear the, the weirs that must have powered the mills. Here we've got the fast flowing water that had been used to drive the mill. We're just going to go into Morden Hall Park National Trust place through this gate here and here it is. This is uh, the Wandle near the Rose Garden in Morden Hall Park. Here's the Wandle and here's the Rose Garden and there's Kate up ahead. We still haven't found a place to stop and eat our lunch yet. So it's interesting here, as we pass through Morden Hall Park, that this was where there were snuff mills. Yeah. And you were saying a lot of the wealth of Morden Hall came from snuff. Oh, oh yeah, £6,000 a month. That's yeah. a lot of snuff. And there was a variety of tobacco from this neck of the woods called uh, Mitcham Shag Tobacco, which is, uh, which is interesting. Snuff, you wouldn't think snuff would be such a, a big thing, but this was what, the 17... 50s. Sort of 1700 to 1850. But I guess it's any industry that wants water because they use the water for the mills and you need the mills to grind the tobacco to make the snuff. So no particular reason for it being here I think other than the fast flowing water of the chalk streams and the mills. What we've been trying to work out is what William Morris was doing down on the Wandle. Kate was saying she'd read about Morris moving down here because of the clean water. I think it was his wallpaper factory, but we'll find out. I think that's in Wandsworth, I'm pretty right. sure. Someone is already screaming at the comments, going, you've missed it, it was back there. I don't think so, I don't think so. And of course, the other big thing that we would have been looking forward to once my time was obviously was the Young's Brewery. Uh, that, was, that was my primary association with the Wandle before was Young's Brewery, but they, uh, I think that brewery moved since I was there anyway, within the last sort of 10-15 years. So here we have the tramway, the tram tracks. We've got a level crossing across the tram tracks, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to film ourselves walking across the tram tracks. This is great. You just have to look, right? Yeah, successfully made it across the tram, Kate. Here's uh, Dean Sissy Farm. Now, you would have noticed there was a third walker with us earlier who will remain anonymous, but he did say, you've got to get Dean Sissy Farm in your video. So here it is for our departed friend. And it sounds like he's dead. Departed as in he's not walking with us anymore. Not that he's passed away. Merton Abbey Mills. That's the next big landmark on the walk, just down here. So this is Merton Abbey Mills and fantastic water wheel over there. Loads of people eating and drinking on the far side and I believe there is the William Morris pub over there which means this must be the site of the William Morris works, mustn't it? 
people from uh, people from Walthamstow look away now because Walthamstow's done really well claiming William Morris, but obviously he's linked to other places in London. Well, just the irony of apparently he moved his mill here because he really needed the clean, clean water. There was something about the dyeing process and the chemical process that he needed the really clear calcareous water. But then the irony is that all these industries came to the Wandle and destroyed the water quality. I just think it's a strange irony and the, and the roller coaster that the, the water quality in the River Wandle must have gone through over that kind of hundred years of industry. It's interesting as well because Morris is held up as a kind of uh, early environmentalist in some ways. And yet he probably wasn't aware of what the damage he was doing to the environment through his printing works and his dyes and all that kind of Yeah, stuff. but they would have had no, I mean, back then they'd have had no idea that the chemicals, I mean, they'd have been innovative, you know, amazing kind of chemicals that they were developing in the Victorian era. Nobody really had much inkling that those kind of chemicals would get into the water and get into the sediment and stay there for decades. And I don't know, it is interesting how much they did know about the pollution that they were causing. Because by the Victorian times, they knew about things like air quality and air pollution. And, and they knew that, yeah, I mean, there were those kind of early sort of like environmental campaigns, weren't there, about people working in, you know, kind of working in industry. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much they did know. So, got a fantastic interpretation board here. It says, you are standing in an area that is steeped in history are following in the footsteps of Plantagenet Kings and the martyred Thomas Beckett, Admiral Lord Nelson and his famous lover Emma Hamilton. Wow. William Morris and Arthur Liberty. So uh, Morris and Liberty used the printing works here that became well known for the printing of, of paper and production of dyes. Merton Priory was founded in 1117 as a house of the Augustinian Canons. Wow, it was a center of learning. Thomas, the, Thomas Beckett, was one of its early pupils. That's amazing. The Tower of the Priory collapsed in 1222. It's lovely to meet Alison back there who watches the videos and actually has a, a connection to the Liberty family who used the, the printing works here. So fantastic. Hope you have a great day, Alison. We're going to crack on now. Not far to go, Kate. I don't think we've got maybe another three miles of the Wandle to go down to the Thames, to the Thames at Wandsworth, to a very important sacred spot, confluence of the, of the Wandle and the Thames, where many votive offerings were made, but we'll talk about that when we get there. First of all, we've got to deal with a bit of a 21st yeah, century yeah, yeah. I have to say, something that's taken us both by surprise is it's a lot more scenic than we thought it would be, isn't it? It's a lot more scenic. Like, I know we've walked from Carshalton, to Merton Abbey but already that's a lot more scenic than I thought and also it's a lot more substantial a river than I thought it's a proper river yeah, isn't yeah, it it's a yeah. proper river yeah it's really it's really lovely there's lots of flow there's lots of diversity it's much wider than yeah. I thought it would be this is at uh, this stage we think about the distance we are from the Thames I'd say this is well it's yeah it's comparable to the roading and to to some degree the Lee, not quite as big as the Lee as it in its lower reaches, but certainly a, it's a substantial river anyway. I mean, this is quite, um, I mean, where we are now, we're just downstream from that uh, Merton Mill and you've got, it's quite confined the river. So we've still got vertical edges that would probably date back to that industry, you know, creating the hard embankments for industry. So maybe actually it naturally would have been even wider than it is. Case just pointed out this uh, scene here really highlights how we're leaving the more bucolic scenery behind to enter into a more urban environment. on this building here acknowledging that there's been a mill on this site for at least 750 years a corn mill good to see it being uh, acknowledged in the modern architecture a more unconventional 
heritage plaque here saying that on this spot in 1989 Vinnie Jones pushed Dennis Wise into the Wandle. And these are both footballers that played for Wimbledon. When Wimbledon played here, now obviously the club is AFC Wimbledon. I think they play in the same stadium, in the Plough Lane Stadium, I think. This is Wandle Meadow Nature Park. one of the printable maps you can get on the internet. So until 1970 it was a sewage treatment works, now a reclaimed habitat of increasing diversity. But it's really got that feel to it, hasn't it, of sort of post-industrial brownfield, brownfield site, brown land. And it really would have been brown if it was a sewage treatment works. <laughs> really a subway or an underpass, but it's a nice bit of under the railway bridge action was always good for the walk. I actually rate that quite highly for my railway bridge walkthroughs, whatever you call them. It's not quite up there with the one off the end of Gladstone Park that's got artworks in it, but that's obviously had some funding. Because this one is just so uh, homemade, so it gets brownie points for that. Hmm. It was quite atmospheric. It was atmospheric. And it didn't stink of urine. No, it's always a bonus. So, which is, again, double brownie points. Kate's trying to work out what this concrete channel here. I mean, this is, I think, the wandle down there. I don't think it's a cutting that runs away from it. And it's not entirely clear. It's very different. You can see very steep concrete walls with some breeze blocks. I think it must have been part of the sewage works. Have you discovered anything on the no. other map? I can't decide whether it's a channel or a wall or... Well, is it something Vinnie Jones built between training sessions at Wimbledon? I'm just get, I'm hammerly getting in the fact that... Uh, I'm hammerly getting in the fact that Plough Lane, uh, home of Wimbledon, is parallel and we're not going to go past it, I don't think so. So that's why I thought I'd mention Vinnie Jones in connection to the wall. I'm holding. I'm holding the microphone here. <laughs> So we now think this is part of the sewage treatment works. It's not actually not the wandle. The wandle is leaning into the wandle. I mean, that's really, really deep, really steep sides. I, I wonder if that's connecting the sewage treatment works with the river. Mm, could be. Oh yeah. That's the, uh, that's the wandle just up ahead. So we're encountering a bit more of a kind of industrial landscape. This smell, I think there must be some sort of water treatment works over there. So the undergrowth, there's definitely a whiff of something in the air, isn't there? And lots of pipes and stuff going on there. It doesn't show it on the map. As we're getting nearer the Thames, it's getting far more built up. You can see this active industrial area here. Summers Town here. Summers Town, Earlf Earlsfield. I'm not entirely sure where the distinction lies, but the map shows both names here. But we'll set up for Summers Town because that's a much nicer name. We're, oh, so we're in Wandsworth now. So we've got the Surrey Iron Railway. So Wandsworth was the birthplace of the first public railway in the world. Who knew that? In the 19th century, Penn, you, see, you can see the river and part of the Young's Brewery in the distance. The railway was opened in 1803 and ran for eight miles from the mouth of the Wandle to Mersham in Surrey. That's fascinating. I'd heard of the Surrey Iron Railway. I didn't know it was the first public railway in the world, though. And this is what awaits us, Kate. This bucolic, almost Venetian scene is what <laughs> is up ahead. Or will we encounter something like these images of uh, pollution? So we're just having to do a little bit of road walking away from the river, around these streets here. But the reason I mention it, it's not that it's interesting, I mean these streets are quite nice, but it's because this walk, it's normally a feature of river walks, the zigzagging. When I walked the Rom the other week, I pointed it out, the, the zigzaggy nature of London river walks. This has not been a zigzaggy walk hardly, so there's been a little bit of it, but that was been when we've been walking in Parkland and you're, you know the footpaths in the parkland take you in a certain direction but this is the first 
bit of real kind of street walking we've done through this residential area and this because we're near the we're near the Thames now we're on the outskirts of Wandsworth I will say as well <laughs> this walk has taken a long time uh, today I mean, it's a nine mile walk and it, I think we started at about probably about two o'clock I'd say a bit slow getting here it's two o'clock so it's taken us five hours to cover about seven miles quicker than a mile an hour but well beneath, beneath the usual two miles an hour so we're just going past Earlsfield station here. I've actually walked through here before on my uh, Patrick Keeler's London walk. So we go underneath the railway bridge. This is the first kind of heavily built up area we've been through, isn't it? Yeah. I think I had, I think I had my lunch in a Costa Coffee along here somewhere. I mean, up until day. now, you could have forgotten that you were in London. Yeah, that's right. So we're turning off uh, the high street here along Penwith Road past this pub. The Wandle of Earlsfield, and I think this is where we'll see the Wandle running between the houses, where I've seen it before. Just off the Penwith Road, here we have the Wandle flowing between houses, which is the first time that we've seen a scene like this. And this is a, a classic London River walk now, but because this is the end of our walk, towards the end of our walk, this is the first time we see such a scene. Likewise, on the other side there. So we've got to go around the houses and walk parallel. They've got these little little Viking bollards here. I don't know what the link between the Vikings and Wandsworth is. This is something to look up in the in the books at home. Well, they yeah, they're definitely Vikings, and they're not Anglo-Saxons, are they? Could they be the Celts? Difference. They could be Celts. How would you tell the difference? How would you tell the difference? This is a great view of the Wandle from here. We were about to go the wrong way, and we got rescued by a couple walking home with their pizza, and they said, "Follow us. We find." lost wander walkers and guide them on the correct path and here it is wow so just going to pass through king george's park now homing in on the end of the walk about another three quarters of a mile or a mile to go we're now going behind these tower blocks here and i think there's a shopping center up ahead moving in for a sunset over the thames now the walk is decidedly less bucolic as we move into Wandsworth Town Centre. We're getting close to the Thames and it's our first bit of river hunting because the river is up here somewhere. And then we're going to turn left on the final stretch. We're a bit tired now. So I think this site here is the old brewery. It's called Ram Quarter. This must be the old Young's Brewery here. Now it's kind of shishi housing development with riverside bars. And here is the River Wandle, but it does look as though it's actually created a nice riverside walk, so there is an upside. So Wandsworth is uh, said to be derived from the Anglo-Saxon name Wendell's Settlement. I guess it would have been Wendellsburg or something like that. So it's another London place name which derives from an Anglo-Saxon name, although there were Roman remains found around the, the mouth of the Wandle and obviously as we'll talk about when we get to the end there's a lot of votive offerings down here in the Thames, a lot of Bronze Age offerings. Actually there were some back up at, um, up at Carl Shulton Ponds as well, they found Bronze Age hordes up there but it's been a place of habitation for a very long time. I'm not sure if the Romans necessarily settled it in big numbers but there was a Roman villa found near here. But of course Kate, I suppose the misleading thing with finding archaeological remains in a river and thinking they relate to that place is they could have washed down from anywhere along further up, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Although big, heavy things probably don't move all that far, maybe. So like bronze, but flint. Yeah, yeah. Things like flints and stones. Oh, our nice riverside walk <laughs> has ended here. So we've got to go. I think big objects, you know, uh, sort of the objects that people might use when they were working in the river, you know, heavy objects, tools, that kind of thing. I don't think they move that far. Right. I and mean, they might move a little bit with sort of flash flooding and, and that kind of thing, but you need quite a bit of flow to move a piece of flint. But I suppose, because these rivers have been so engineered and modified over, you know, the last kind of 100, 200 years, that I think a lot of those artifacts might get moved by that engineering works. You know, so rivers get dredged, they get straightened, they get cleared. This is the final stretch of the Wandle, as it becomes, I think, the Wandle Creek. 
as it makes its way to the Thames. And that you were saying, Kate, this is this looks like an urban river. I'm going to go along this little path there on the other side into a Thames sunset. I'm interested to uh, try and work out where it's tidal. It doesn't look like it's tidal here. So I assume there must be a, a weir or a sluice gate somewhere. Maybe, maybe that's the island that we're about to see is the tidal bit. Well, I would say that looks like it's tidal. Because that was wet, wasn't it? That's been underwater. I think this bit here is called Bell Creek. And I think that's the, the, the Wandle Creek is on that side. And Bell Creek is on this side. There you go, John, there's the bell. Yeah. And I bet that's the sluice gate that keeps the tidal water out. Can you make out the writing on the bell? Like it says, rung by the tides. Do you reckon that's what it says? Probably. Yeah. So this must be the sluice gate that's the artificial tidal limit. Some of these huge tower blocks here, right on the, uh, the confluence of the Wandle and the Thames. The real feature of the Thames now, these tower blocks stretching all the way along its length, within London anyway. So this is the final stretch of the Wandle as it makes its confluence with the Thames right ahead there. Look, we've got a glorious setting sun at the confluence of the Wandle and the Thames. Isn't that wonderful? We'll have to walk over this little island to the left here called the Spit that will see us join with the other bit, Bell Creek. Can you smell that odour, what we're going to call odour de Wandle? Odour Wandle. Odour Wandle. So Kate, you were saying that this is the... I read somewhere that they refer to this as the Wandle Delta. So I wonder if actually this spit was a sediment, a kind of sediment embankment, sediment load. Um, because that's the Bell Creek behind you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And now they've named the two kind of branches of the Wandle, the Wandle over there and the and Bell Creek. Wandle Delta. Yeah. This is the development at the end of the... River Wandle. This is the final stretch, the final little bit as we go towards the confluence of the Wandle and the Thames. Well, I'm pretty tired, Kate. I've managed, we've managed to turn a nine mile, what was supposed to be a nine mile walk into a, at least a 12 mile walk, <laughs> if not a little bit further. I don't know how we've managed to do that. Every time you go wrong, we went, I think around that many times, but you have to, you go the wrong way in one of those parks, you have to double back again. That just adds like, you know, 100 yards, 200 yards on, and you know, before you know it, you've added three miles on, four miles. And we did that quite a bit. We did that quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so here at the confluence of the Wandle and the Thames, it's a sacred spot in pagan beliefs. So they've discovered a number of votive offerings here in the past, a number of bronze artifacts, including the magnificent Wandsworth shield not as famous as the Battishy Shield, found further east, just around the Thames there. But the Wandsworth Shield was said by one expert of the era to be one of the great masterpieces of Celtic art found in Europe. It was found just down here. So that's it, Kate. We've made it <laughs> to the end of the Wandle Trail. It's the point where the Wandle meets the Thames. How was that? For you, how was your experience of that wonder walk? Oh, it's lovely. I, I'm, I'm amazed how it didn't feel like being in London. I'm really amazed at how sort of naturalistic, particularly the upper reaches are. Really beautiful, really beautiful. It really delivered the Wandle Trail. We can definitely say it delivered. Thanks to all the people who have been saying, you must walk the Wandle, you must walk the Wandle. And the only bits I'd seen were these bits here. I've walked around here before and I walked through the streets of Wandsworth before and seen it there, but Wow, it's much more scenic, much more mm. bucolic than I thought. I thought it'd be fairly gnarly and industrial a lot of the way, given its reputation as being a highly industrialized river. And this bit here, I said we left, we, we left Stratford today at about 11.30. Mm -hmm. And I said to Kate, I would want to get a sunset by the Thames. And Kate was like, we're going to be finished long before <laughs> sunset. Yeah, we had a little bit of trouble with the trains today. So we didn't get to Carshorton until I think about two o'clock. But even so, it's taken us 
seven hours to get from Carshalton to here to walk our 12 mile, 14 mile walk. It's been worth it. Thank you to all of you for coming on that walk with us. I know we've had Kate here and our mystery guest. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but your company has been fantastic. And thanks to all the people that have been patiently waiting for me to do this walk. I keep announcing that next week I'm going to be walking the Wander and then I don't do it, I do something else. Finally, finally we've done the Wander trail. So I have to do the standard sign off, even though Kate's here and she doesn't know anything about this. But I look forward to seeing you on the next walk wherever that may be. It's going to be somewhere brilliant, but what it won't be is I won't be going, oh, it'll be the Wandle, because we've done that now. It'll have to be somewhere else, probably not a river. <laughs> <laughs>